Hey there, my name is John Siskovich and I'm getting increasingly warm shooting these videos this morning because it is hot, hot, hot. Anyways, I have these hot plants and they grow 18 feet tall and in the Northeast especially, they're very susceptible to fungal diseases. So you do certain things to help keep the fungus off the plants. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about spraying, um, but today we're gonna talk about pruning the bottom of the plant. See how it's naked right here and then the leaves start? It would look like this all the way down but we have taken all the leaves off and that's what we're talking about. So in the granular hop knowledge world, uh, when you're growing hops at scale and you want to fight back fungus, what I have learned is that to increase airflow and to keep the wet ground further away from the hot plant itself, uh, to keep things from crawling up, whether it's bugs or fungus uh, or diseases, you prune off all the bottom leaves so that the plant above is a little bit more isolated from the ground and you increase, increase the airflow uh, lower to the ground, especially when you have some weed pressure and stuff that's gonna just kinda hang on to moisture. So what we'll do is when these plants get to about um, seven to 10 feet tall, uh, you know, you gotta be well over your head, go through and you grab and you kinda shimmy your hand down and rip all these leaves off. You know, these all come off and then you throw them in the middle of the field and either rake it up so you're getting rid of that diseased biomass or potentially diseased biomass, the necrotic tissue, um, or just mulch it and mow it into the ground and hope that you're not growing just then a fungus field uh, in between your hot plants. Now the difficulty I found with these, uh, the bottom of this plant, those uh, runners, these, these vines, grow out in a different series. You know, it's not condensed into one little tight knob. It's in about one to two square feet. So as you're coming down, as those vines are intertwined with each other, because there's like four or five or six on this one, uh, the leaves get stuck and it just takes you a long time to rip all the leaves off, do a good job. And then you end up being like, oh, I want to get these low level leaves. And then I end up weeding. And my question for the more experienced hop growers is how meticulous you are with removing the bottom part of the hop plant. Do you not do it at all and just stay on top of your fungal sprays? Do you uh, use a defoliar so you're killing the leaves uh, that are on this with a spray? But my question there is that if you're killing those leaves and they die then it's dead tissue that fungus can grow on get into the plant become systemic or grow on that dead tissue as it goes up and then continue on up the plant uh, i haven't found the clearest of information on that and i totally want to know more because what happens is that again if you have five to ten hot plants and you're watching this going john you're crazy it's so easy for me to grow five hot plants i have a thousand plants and if say i take two minutes on each one that's 2,000 minutes and that's like at least more than five hours. I don't know what the math is because I didn't do it out ahead of time and I can't do math in my head and talk on a video. So to, to reduce the pressure of fungal diseases, this is our review section now, re reduce the uh, plant susceptibility to fungus. You defoliate the bottom two to three feet and that will keep the fungus from coming up off the ground into the plant and help uh, increase airflow so that this stays drier to make a less conducive environment for that fungus. The other thing that is very popular uh, is the idea of sheep going through the hop yard. There's been some trials where people have done sheep. Apparently it's more uh, popular in New Zealand and Australia uh, where there are more sheep farmers because there's not a lot of sheep farmers up here in the Northeast. Um, I've done that in the past and they do a great job of defoliating. You just have to be very on time with your rotations and how you move your sheep through the hop yard because that while they like the broad leaves and they won't chew on the binds at first, if you leave them one day too long, they start to chew through uh, the binds and then you have a bunch of dead plants in addition to all the benefits that they've brought. Um, so your timing has to be spot on with the sheep. They can do a really good job in that. You'll get that laser level line where they're as far as their head can reach with what they're chewing on. Um, but again, comes with a lot of timing and then you have to have an, uh, something to do with the sheep for the rest of the year. You do this once and then you don't want the sheep in the hop yard again throughout the rest of the season. You can put them in early in the year if you want to like prune off the first buds 
and uh, prune back some of the grass. Uh, and then you put them in midway through the season to prune the plant. Um, but I wanna know now, does anybody else have experience on this? In the comment section, can you put any links, um, information or videos? And because Allie's watching this, Allie, what do you guys do on your farm um, to answer this question? Tomorrow we're gonna go over uh, spraying in the heat. It is so hot right now, I'm sweating my face off. Um, and when you spray on a broadleaf plant in the heat, it's a bad thing. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow, but today it's pruning the bottom of the plant. Um, I know it's a little off chicken topic uh, series with the hop yard, but as it is a lot of what I do here, I wanted to create these videos so I can send them to the University of Vermont, I can send them to my friend Allie, I can send them to some other hop growers, and they can all call me a silly greenhorn, and here's how you solve all these problems, and they're going to come up with amazing solutions. All of my problems will be made easy and simple to fix, and then my life will be better and I can sit back and have a beer. But until that day comes, I will continue to toil on growing hops in the Northeast, which I don't recommend unless you are better at it than I am. And uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoy your day. Until next time, I'll see you out in the field. Oh, got a text, gotta go.